Hello and welcome back to Waltz in Lyrical, a brand new YouTube channel to discuss everything Strictly Come Dancing. up this week was the lovely lovely Ranj and Jeanette. Now they did a dance to yet another one of my wedding songs, Wouldn't It Be Nice by the Beach Boys. If you watched last week's video you will know that two of my other wedding songs were on last week's episode. I think there may have been a secret spy at my wedding. Anyway, regular viewers will know that I really like Ranj and Jeanette, but unfortunately I thought this dance could have been a little bit smoother and perhaps there was something missing. I'm not sure what, but I just didn't really connect with this dance. Next up were Lauren and AJ with the very first contemporary dance danced on Strictly as part of Couples Choice. Now this takes me right back to my teenage years because I used to belong to a contemporary dance club, believe it or not. So this was really up my street and I bloomin' loved it. As I know a lot of Strictly fans do, I watch the show along with Twitter so I've got a good idea of what people are liking, not liking so much, etc. And this was a little bit controversial, the contemporary piece. A lot of people didn't get it, which is absolutely fine, but I'm a big, big fan of contemporary and I thought Lauren was very brave to really throw herself into the contemporary movements. Craig scored her a four, which I think was really undermarked. She got four, six, six, seven, and I think that just shows that Craig is watching something else. Come on, Craig. Graham and Otie were up next with their tango, and Graham just surprises me week after week. He had a good posture, he gave it a great attack, the musicality was there, and I think you could definitely tell that he was enjoying doing a tango. I thought this was particularly good because he had an excellent tango face, whereas sometimes I think the male celebrities can look a bit awkward. They sometimes do a very comically angry face and that just makes me laugh. Ashley and Pasha were up next with their rumba. Now I thought this looked very, very professional, but it looked a tiny bit showy. Now I know nothing about the technicalities of a rumba apart from what I've seen on Strictly, but it just seemed to have lots and lots of spinning in it. She was going round and round and round. If that was me, I'd have just fallen over on the floor. So, you know, fair dues to Ashley. I thought guest judge Alfonso was completely nailing it with the comments last night. Now he said that Ashley has a really good ability to go quick then slow and this really shows what great strength and control that she has. So 9999, excellent score. Sean and Katia were up next with their quick step. Now I thought Sean delivered a good performance but a bit like last week I thought this was a little bit frantic in places. What put me off was Sean either, I think he was either singing or counting along with the music. Now I have a question, can you leave in the comments below if you think that this is off-putting when dancers are dancing? Because I know that some people absolutely love it when the dancers sing along and some people, a bit like me, find it a little bit off-putting and a bit annoying and I'd love to hear what people think. He scored 24 which I think is a very fair mark for that dance. Stacey and Kevin were next with their showgirl samba. Do, 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 do. I do completely understand what the judges are saying that Stacey pretty much nails it but sometimes her arms go a little bit like this which she actually picked up on herself at the end where she hilariously said that she has a sea world kind of vibe going on with her arms. Joe and Diane were up next with their beautiful waltz. Now I think that Joe and Diane have a lovely natural connection and I think this really comes across in their performance. They're really really in tune with each other and I think this helps the movements be very fluid across the dance floor. 
Craig was talking about Joe's expression quite a lot throughout that dance. I didn't really agree. I don't know what expression he wanted Joe to have. I think he performed it personally very well. Vic and Graziano were next and they did a cha-cha which scored 20 points. Oh dear. I'm afraid I have to agree with the judges on this one. I wasn't a fan. It seemed to take ages to get started and then when it got going I just oh I, I panicked the music I, I didn't like the music at all the music completely put me off and I just think it looked like a bit of a mess I'd love someone to let me know whether the choreography just wasn't good because something in that dance just did not do it for me and obviously for the judges too. I think Vic has got so much potential and I really, really wanted to like this. So I'd really be interested if anybody who knows about choreography could let me know, was this Graziano's mistake here or what happened? Kate and Aliash did a Viennese waltz and I thought that this was a big improvement on last week, which wasn't that hard. This dance definitely suited Kate because she is very elegant, but I did think it was a little bit mediocre. Um, I, I love them as a couple and I really want them to go through. I really do enjoy watching her dance and her relationship with Ali Ash um, get closer and closer, but mm, not much to say about this one. Top of the leaderboard this week was Danny and Amy with their jive. First up, let's talk about that VT and the quote, if he can dance on an aeroplane, he can dance on a dance floor. What I loved about the jive was the very happy, jolly side of Danny that it brought out. It was really, really good, wasn't it? <laughs> it scored the first 10 of the series and I think they very, very much deserved it. It was a really, really fun dance. So much so that I actually wanted to watch it straight back again after it ended and I think that's a really good sign. Uh, I love the theme, I loved Amy's red play suit and yeah, like Craig said, a dance for the final. I think we'll be seeing it again, but hopefully not in the bottom two. Faye and Giovanni did a foxtrot and she was very, very good at the acting in that piece. Could this be a uh, another post Strictly career change Faye? I know the judges weren't that keen, but I really liked the breakout section where they were dancing solo because I think it just adds a little bit of something interesting to the dance and it also uses the floor quite well because I really tend to like the ones that go over here, go over there, do a little bit of something here, come together in hold. Faye is consistently good and I think she deserves to be up there with the front runners. Last but not least was Charles and Karen with the very first street dance of Strictly Come Dancing. Now, did anybody else think because of what they were wearing, they were gonna do some sort of the mask themed street dance? I really hope that this is a turning point for Charles and Karen. They definitely, definitely do not deserve to be in the bottom two because I thought that was fabulous really enjoyed what Alfonso said that the theme of this dance was a good time. They got four nines and I think they absolutely deserve it because they were smashing that dance. They put so much energy into it and I know that some people are not going to appreciate a street dance being part of Strictly but the show is changing, it is growing and please can they not be in the bottom two? So awkward. It's time for VEV's top three. And number three. And number three this week was guest judge Alfonso Ribeiro. A very welcome change from Bruno falling off of his chair, I thought this week. I agreed with pretty much everything he was saying. He gave some constructive but very positive criticism. And he just seems like a, a nice guy, doesn't he? At number two, a slightly controversial um, opinion here, but at number two, I'm going to put in the inclusion of the couple's choice dances. 
Looking at some of the feedback on Twitter um, about Strictly including the couple's choice dances, mm, I would say it was about 50-50 of people thinking it's brilliant and people being really angry because they're not ballroom and they're not Latin and they shouldn't be on Strictly Come Dancing. As you can tell, I am on the other side of the fence and I think it's brilliant that Strictly is moving with the times and is appealing to a slightly younger audience with the inclusion of the contemporary, the street dance, the musical theatre dancing. Let's celebrate all kinds of dance, shall we? Yeah! Please do let me know if you don't agree though because I do want to get a conversation going about this one. At number one, number one, one, one. At number one, I'm gonna go for it and I'm gonna put in Charles and Karen's street dance. Now, if you've watched any of my previous videos, I've never really put Charles and Karen at the top of my list of favourites. They've kind of always been a bit middling for me and perhaps that's why they've been in the bottom two for the last two weeks. Not that everybody votes on the back of these videos, but you know what I mean. I think there must have been so much pressure on Charles. He was doing the first street dance ever on Strictly. He was closing the show. He's been in the bottom two for the last two weeks. That has got to be really tough. And I thought that they smashed it. Fast, energetic, fun, loads of kicks, loads of jumping, jumping over chairs, hats, suits. Brilliant. More next week, please. All that's left for me to do now is to say goodbye. Thank you very much for watching. Please do subscribe if you like Strictly, if you like Glitter Balls, if you like Jazzy Jumpers, whatever. Whatever you're here for, stick around, press the notification bell and I'll see you next week.